Hello, so today we're going to be talking about how to do some monohybrid crosses. I've got a couple of examples for us, but here's the first one we're going to start with. It's pretty typical and it's eye color. So if we have the idea that blue eyes are recessive to brown eyes, we can label them like this. We can give blue eyes with the recessive a little b and brown eyes, which is dominant, a big b. If a blue eyed man and a heterozygous brown eyed woman have a child, what is the chance that they have a blue-eyed baby or a brown-eyed baby? So the first thing we need to do is figure out what genotypes the man and then the woman have. So we can do that right over here. So our man, if he is blue-eyed and blue eyes are recessive, he has to have two of the recessive alleles. So he's going to be little b, little b. He can't have a big b, because if he were a little b, big b, the big b would show through and he would have brown eyes. But we know he has blue eyes, so he has to be double recessive alleles, little b, little b. The heterozygous brown-eyed woman gave it away already, heterozygous. That means it's going to have one of each allele. So our woman is going to be big b, little b. This is the same as little b, big b. Um, I just like to put the capital letter first. It just kind of helps my brain a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and fill out our Punnett square. We'll put one of the parents across the top and the other parent across the side. It doesn't matter which is which for now. So I'm going to put the dad here and then our mom here. When you fill in a Punnett square, things that are on the side, so our big b and our little b here are going to move across the Punnett square. And the two alleles on the top are going to move down the Punnett square. So I can always put my little arrows like this to remind me which direction they go. So this big B comes across, this little B comes across, this little B moves down, and this little B moves down. Now we filled in our Punnett square completely. Now we're looking at the chance of a blue-eyed baby versus a brown-eyed baby. So we'll put blue eyes here and brown eyes down here. Let's take a look at blue eyes first. Blue eyes in this case are recessive. So we know in order for a baby to have blue eyes, they have to have both little b alleles. They cannot have any of the dominant big b alleles for brown eyes. So we have one, two possibilities here out of four for blue eyes or one out of two or 50%. So there's a 50% chance they have a baby with blue eyes. Now, if we do the same thing to brown, we know it can't be these two because they're already blue eyed babies. So we see that over here. We've got at least one dominant allele for brown eyes in each of these baby possibilities. So again, it's also two out of four because there's one, two, three, four squares, which gives us one half or 50% possibility of having brown eyes. So that's how we would do a simple monohybrid cross. We're going to go ahead and look at another example. It's going to be a little bit ridiculous, um, but I'm a little bit ridiculous. So here is our second example. We are talking about hobbits. So if you've never seen Lord of the Rings or read the books, this will be kind of strange. Hobbits are fictional creatures, people, kind of. So ignore that part. So in hobbits, hairy feet are dominant, and that's why they have the big H here. So hairy feet are dominant. Two hairless feet, which are a little h. So hairless feet are recessive. Um, so it's gonna be potentially more common to have hairy feet, just depends. So if two hobbits who are heterozygous for hairy feet have little hobbitlings, uh, will any have smooth feet or hairless feet? What is the probability of having hairless feet? So let's take a look. We have our two hobbits here, so our mom hobbit and our dad hobbit, and they are both heterozygous. Again, heterozygous means they have one of each allele, a dominant allele and a recessive allele. So if we pull that from here, they're both going to be big H, little h. Both of those parents, think about this, are they going to have hairy feet or are they going to have hairless feet? Because they have that big H allele, they're going to have hairy feet. So both parents here have hairy feet. We're going to go ahead and put one parent in each side of the Punnett square. 
This time they're the same, so it actually doesn't matter where we put them as long as they're together. Remember, if it's on the side of the Punnett square, those letters will move across. If it's on the top of the Punnett square, those letters will move down the Punnett square. So we'll start here. Big H is going to move across. Little h is going to move across. Big H is going to move down. And little h is going to move down. I highly recommend that you make your letters very different if it's capitalized or lowercase. Otherwise, you may confuse yourself later. Now that we've got our Punnett square filled in, we're looking at will any of them have hairless or smooth feet? Let's think. Hairless feet or smooth feet, that's recessive. So for an, a baby hobbitling to have hairless or smooth feet, they have to have only recessive alleles, only little h's. We see that here. So will any have? Yes, one out of four will have smooth feet or hairless feet. Same thing in this case. Now, what's the probability? When we talk about probability, we mean percentage. So we need to take that one out of four and convert it into a percentage. If you are not a math-minded person, and this is kind of tough for you to do right off the top of your head, think of it this way. Four quarters equals one dollar, and each quarter is 25 cents. So one quarter, that's going to be 25 percent. So 25 percent will have smooth or hairless feet. And that's it. So that's all you need to do for a monohybrid cross. The couple of keys here to kind of recap what we learned, you need to make sure that you take care of what the mom and dad genotypes are first. Now I say mom and dad, I mean parent genotypes here. Um, in plants, you don't really have a mom plant and a dad plant. You just have plant one and plant two. So that's what we're taking a look at here. So please make sure you figure out the parent genotypes first. Put one genotype at the top and one genotype on the side here. You can't mix them up. So you can't put two big H's on the top and two little H's on the side. You will not get the correct results. So please make sure you keep the parent genotype together on the top or the side of the Punnett square. And that's it. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more biology videos. And please see any of the other videos in my genetic help section. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you later.